Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Jen. Um, everybody, I want to introduce you to my friend and longtime friend, actually. We reconnected on Facebook a couple of years ago, but uh, I've been really, I'm really grateful that we did reconnect because Carolyn has helped me in many ways. Um, Carolyn, I'm going to have her introduce herself to you all. I have some questions for her about uh, the work that she does, but I think that listening to her story and how she approaches her business could be really helpful if you are an entrepreneur who struggles in any way, and I think that is every single entrepreneur that I know. So, um, Carolyn, I'm going to give you the, the floor to introduce yourself and what you do and who you are. Um, I am 49 years old, and I am married. I have three girls, ages 15, 11, and 8. And um, I, my background is I was a nurse for a few years after college. That's where I got my degree in, and I just found that it really wasn't for me. So, um, But I did like the teaching aspect of it, so I went back to school, and I got my graduate degree in elementary education, and I loved that. I taught fifth grade for a few years until the children started coming. And then um, after my second one was born, I decided to stay home. Um, I always enjoyed working out, so I taught fitness classes on the side, and that's where, how I met Jen. We worked out together mm -hmm. in the gym for a long time. Um, and then uh, when my youngest was getting ready to go into kindergarten, I just wasn't really feeling good physically. I had had a lot of stomach issues. I had some complications with her when I was pregnant with her that never really seemed to resolve. So... Um, and I was also looking at the fact that I, I probably, for my own mental well-being, needed to get back to work. So I was looking at possibly going back into subject. I'd been out for like a long time, like nine years. So I was looking at possibly going back into substitute teaching. And that's when I just contacted my friend. I saw a post on Facebook about a home workout program. I had never heard of Shanti before, um, but that was my first introduction to Beachbody, and that's the MLM that I'm, I'm part of. And I just simply um, bought the program from her because I wanted an alternative to, go to going to the gym. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really know anything about uh, the business opportunity. So that's kind of how, how I started. How long ago was that? Um, well, Bella is in third grade going into fourth. So, um, and it was when she was going into kindergarten. So that'd okay. be like four years, like a little okay. over four years. Okay. So I'm going to ask you in a minute, a couple of the, a couple of ideas about how the landscape of that has changed in those four years from when you started to where you are now, but, um, we'll get there in a minute. So I love that you started talking about like you're a mom and a wife, uh, because I know you personally, and I know that that's like the most important thing to you is having a life outside of your work. Mm -hmm. And I think you do quite an excellent job of creating boundaries while being able to maintain a successful direct marketing business. So I'm going to ask you some questions about that too. And the way that you started the conversation is very indicative of how important that is to you. So I thought, I just want to point that out. Yeah. Um, but no. you can be, you can be a mom and a wife and still own your own business. Yes. Yep. So, um, you told us a little bit about the story of starting your business and what drew you to it? Because a lot of people are really resistant to starting indirect marketing businesses. What drew you to Beachbody? Um, you know, and I didn't even know what MLM meant, like what, mm -hmm. what that even meant. Um, what drew me to it is I've always loved fitness. And so um, my coach, the person that I ordered my initial purchase from, she put me in a challenge group on Facebook and I wasn't even on Facebook. I was not on any social media four and a half years ago. I actually did, had no desire to be on it, um, but I had to. Some things have never changed. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. Um, I, I knew I had to, to be part of this virtual community, which my coach said would really help. So I joined it and I, I was just completely ignorant of the whole social media landscaping. I had no idea that people were running businesses through um, social mm -hmm. media. I didn't realize that I was like connecting with people who want to work out from all over the country. Um, and I really kind of thought that was really cool. And I learned a lot, even though I had been in fitness and I, and I felt I was a, a healthy eater, I really did learn a lot. So I felt that this was right up my alley. Um, and it, interestingly enough, it kind of brought the teaching and the health which I had thought that I had almost wasted degrees on because I wasn't really using it anymore, but it kind of all kind of brought it together for me. So I almost felt like it was meant to be. And, um, and then I started thinking, 
if I could actually build a business to the point where I didn't really even have to go back to work and I wasn't looking at making a ton of money. I mean, how much do substitute teachers make? I mean, I was, I was looking, my, my goals initially were small. Yeah. Uh, but I'm thinking I could make a couple hundred dollars a week. It would be a win-win. I would get to do what I love. Right. Help people and then not actually have to physically leave the house for work because that was a very big stressor um, mm -hmm. for me. We have no family local. So even though I was fortunate enough not to have to work full time outside the house, I was still looking at trying figuring out who was going to be home when I left for work, who was going to be home when I got home, you know, get the yeah. kids off the bus. So, um, so that's kind of how. So it combined uh, convenience and opportunity and also it, it like merged together the things that you love anyway. Right. I think yeah. that we do, I, I think that women could do a better job of taking ourselves outside of the box of the things that we're good at. Like I'm a teacher, I'm a nurse, you know, I'm, I'm a this and saying, well, what are the skills that I bring to something? What am I really good at? Oh, I'm really good at, um, you know, connecting with people. I'm really good at teaching people and, and thinking about how we can use our skills in other ways because when we keep ourselves in these boxes, it prevents us from seeing what's, what's possible. Absolutely. And I think that we all have strengths that we just don't use or we forgot about. I mean, yeah. I remember when I was in high school and in college, I really enjoyed taking English classes. I loved to write. Mm -hmm. and I never, I mean, I know as a teacher you write and that's, but um, I found writing my posts for challenge groups, it made it really kind of um, helped me dip into a creative part of my yeah. brain that I hadn't used or I hadn't really used that much <laughs> in a That's long time. That's such a great point. I love that. Right. So, yeah, we all, I mean, a lot of people think, what, what, can I, what can I bring to the table? I can't bring anything to the table. Everybody's selling skincare or everybody's, right. you, know, uh, you know, I know a million beach body coaches. Well, they don't know you, you know, right. so you always have individual things that you can bring to the table based on your life experiences. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so what have you found were the benefits of working for a direct marketing company or an MLM? And for those of you who don't know, so um, anytime you're working under something like like a Rodan and Fields or Beachbody or um, Beauty Counter, those are big companies, and then they have people selling for them, and these used to be called pyramid schemes. And there are some people, I'm going to ask you about this because there are people who still think they're, they have these negative connotations. Um, MLM means multi-level marketing firm. So they're either known as DMs or MLMs. So what are the benefits that you found in working for one of these companies? Well, I think like um, time, because in order for me to actually, if I, if I didn't have Beachbody, in order for me to successfully run a fitness business, I honestly don't think I'd be able to do it. I don't have a personal, even though I love fitness, I don't have a personal training degree. Even though I'm really, I educate myself a lot about what to eat and the right way to eat. I don't have a nutrition degree. Mm -hmm. um, but Beachbody ha, you know, has personal trainers that develop these programs. And they right, have right. nutritionists that um, create these food plans. So if you're a good coach, you'll educate yourself on everything and find what works best for you and your particular client and use it. So it, it has given me the platform to be able to do what I love without me having to actually create every single aspect of it. Yes. You haven't had to recreate the wheel. It's kind of like a plug and play formula for you. Right. Right. Exactly. So it gives uh, you, it's like a machine is behind you. You haven't had to create the machine. You can just step in and like turn the key and go. Right. And then what happens is within your, um, within your group. And I mean, most, most MLMs, no matter whether you're selling bags or whatever, you probably have some kind of group of people, either clients or um, other distributors <laughs> or whatever. Um, that's where you can use your own creative um, skills, you know, in making those groups the best possible groups they can by coming up with cute little challenges or right. um, beauty ideas if you're into skincare. So you can still, you can still be individual, but you Within don't have the machine. Partner. Yes. You so you get to kind of make it your own without having to create it from the ground up. Right. And you can make it your own without having a boss telling you how to make it your own. And that's yes. the beauty of it too. Or leaving your house. Right. <laughs> and getting a babysitter. Yeah. Right. I love exactly. that. Um, what do you think the stereotypes, challenges, and hurdles that somebody who, who's moving into a direct marketing position uh, needs to overcome in order to get success? Um, okay, well, there's two ways of looking at that. Like, are you mm -hmm. thinking about, like, what you were saying about, like, the pyramid scheme? And really, but really either. I'd love, I'd love to have all of your opinions on it. Okay. Well, 
I'll get to that whole pyramid thing in a second. But one okay. thing, um, and it's, you know, this is a, this is a challenge to speak. You know, you got to stop caring what other people think. <laughs> and I mean, you're always going to like, if you're like me, I'm a sensitive person. It is always going to bother me to think that somebody might think negatively of something I'm doing or something I'm promoting. Mm -hmm. Um, but you have to kind of compartmentalize and kind of let it go. Um, because if you're doing it for the greater good, you just need to, you know, throw your post out there knowing that you're trying to help people. Mm -hmm. um, so you really have to s not let people bother you. Um, I personally have had to, you know, what you have said to me the other day, Jen, really helped me too. Because I was talking to Jen about how much I really, I still to this day cannot stand social media. Mm -hmm. I don't like having to post on there. Um, and she said she's look, she looks at it as an opportunity to reach people. It's like, a, it's like an opportunity, which is true. I mean, I just had to be reminded of that. So um, that, but if those of you that are, have enjoyed social media and have been on it for a long time, that might not be an issue. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that I have, um, as far as the pyramid thing goes, um, think about like, think about like a school setting, okay? And think about like if you're a teacher in a school, Mm -hmm. and the principal is above you, who's going to make more money? You know, yeah. the principal that's above you or the teachers? I mean, the principal's making more money. He's, he's above you. Right. Good. He has more responsibility because he's mm -hmm. got all these teachers underneath him. So if you're leading a team of coaches or whatever your field is, and you have people right. that you've signed underneath you, you should be making more money because you should be helping them to grow their businesses. Right, right, you know? right, right. Uh, so part of your responsibility becomes making them successful. Right. 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 So, and then, but the thing is, there's no reason why, at least with the company that I'm at, you can't actually, you know, just like a teacher who might go on to get like their PhD so they can be a superintendent might at some point be up here. I mean, if you're growing your team and you're, and you're helping a ton of people and your team is helping a ton of people, I mean, you might leapfrog over the person that signed you and end up financially doing better so that's not a pyramid really okay you know? um i think of it like also like you think about a physical therapist you know you might be a, a an employee a physical therapist employee for a hospital and you might be like right here you might be somebody that owns their own physical therapy business and that business is, has a bunch of physical therapists underneath sure. them and then they are thriving they've got to open up another business and then that business i mean we wouldn't think of that as a pyramid scheme. Right, right, but right, right. Me, this is really an interesting perspective. Yeah, but it's a lot. It's really hard to convince the general public. And the other reason why it's hard is because some of these, um, you know, people in my own company, and I'm sure everybody has this, they, they, they don't do what they need to do on social media. They'll post. And I actually, honestly, guys, I used to do this um, when I started, too, because I was clueless. You put a picture of a bag and you say, look at this bag. Isn't it great? <laughs> Message me if you want it. Or, or you know, I used to put pictures of workout, you know, I've got a sale going on. Message me, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, uh -huh. you know, I didn't like it then. I just didn't, I just didn't know what to do. So I very quickly got away from that part of it, but there's some, some people that still kind of do that. And um, mm -hmm. that gives all of us a bad name. They just need to be right. educated, you know? Right. So. I think that that's a good point. They give everybody a bad name. Yeah. So the next question I have, kind of circles around to that. Um, how have you changed business as social media has changed, as the internet has changed, and as people people's perspective has changed? Like, so the question I'm really asking is, what doesn't work anymore and what does work? I think that if you're um, in an MLM, you, you need to be branding yourself. I think that's what mm -hmm. works versus branding whatever company that you're in. Um, I, I never, ever mentioned Beachbody. Ever. No, you I never do. I, I love it. I mean, I think it's done. I, I'm in great shape as a result of it compared to how I was a few years ago. And um, I, I love the company, but you'll never see it on any of my fitness pages or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, I want people to follow me because they like seeing what I'm posting. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be attracting people. Usually most of my people are people in their 40s, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s and above. Most of them have kids, you know, there are people that have the same struggles that I did. That's who I want sure. to attract. So branding yourself is um, the most important thing, like finding out the, you know, the five or six things that you know, maybe, not, maybe not even five or six, two or three things that have nothing to do with your MLM that you're good at, being a mom, whatever your job is, 
whatever your hobbies are and talking about them when you post on social media and then pulling in um, a post about your business every once in a while. And even when you pull in a post about your business, what I have found is that I don't, I'll never say, you know, I'll never say join a challenge group. I'll just kind of like throw, throw something out there that I know is a struggle. And I'll say, if this sounds like you, you know, let me know. I can, you know, I can share with you what works. So it's kind of, it's like sharing your story versus selling anything. Yes. Um, and I think the selling thing from what I hear did work maybe five years ago. I mean, a lot of people were doing it successfully, but um, it definitely doesn't work anymore. And it can really get you kind of thrown off, get, get in a lot of trouble too on social media. Um, yeah. It's like um, one of the people that I follow talks about those kinds of posts as commercial, 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 commercial. People don't want to, they don't tune into a show for the commercial. They tune in for the story and you're, you're calling it a story is a perfect way of saying you tell your story and you weave in how you're making your own journey a success. Right. Right. And I find myself following people. I don't even know what their, um, what, what their business is. I mean, I know it's health and fitness, but they, maybe they are a beach body coach. Maybe they're in coaching for themselves, but I just kind of like what I see mm -hmm. uplifting. So I will follow them. If I ever needed something health and fitness wise, those would be people I would reach out. Right. One of the things I love about you is that you really know where your integrity is. You really know when you're in alignment and out of alignment and you know what feels right to you and you will only do that. So I know that you follow some big names and they, they might have different opinions about how to do certain things on social media and you decide what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And I think, I think that more women could do that. I think that we could kind of stand in our power and say, this doesn't feel right to me. I'm not going to do that. And I know you're really good at that. And I think also, um, like when you, I've taken a lot of trainings from um, other people that have nothing to do with Beachbody. Yeah. And just because somebody um, knows a lot more than you do and has a lot more experience, doesn't mean you have to take, listen to every single thing they say and agree with every single thing they say. It really depends on the type of, um, you know, entrepreneur that you want to be. And right. when I started out, I did really pretty much put into, um, you know, because I'm, I, I, I I'm open to suggestions and I'll change things up if I feel that somebody knows more than me is doing it a certain way. But over time I've gotten more confident in myself saying, you know what, they're telling me to do it and I just don't feel like it's right. So I'm just not going to do it that way. Um, right. But that, that doesn't stop me from listening to them because they might have other things that I would agree with. So, right. So take what you need and leave what you don't. Mm -hmm. That's great. What aspects of your business do you love? What do you, what do you, which, which of the parts uh, of running it do you just enjoy so much? Um, I love when I have discovered a new recipe and everybody in the house likes it or all, you know, they don't like anything I make, but all the kids, kids <laughs> like it and it's easy and it's healthy and I share it on social media and I get a lot of comment. I mean, I, I'm really into that because I'm not a big cook. Um, and that's one area where I think that, um, my business has really helped me. It has forced me to try and find different recipes, um, on a weekly basis. Whereas before I would kind of get lazy and just make whatever. Now I'm constantly trying to change things up and I think my family benefits from it. So I love that part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the fact that it helps, you know, I have to be very accountable. I mean, how can I skip a workout when I'm telling my challengers that they can't, you got to schedule your rest days. That's when you skip, right. you know? So that's that higher level of accountability. I mean, I, I just love that. And I just love the fact that I can make my own hours. I mean, I'm, picking up Sophia up at school and we're actually heading to a gym. I haven't been to a gym in a long time, but I'm doing a one month membership with her. Um, oh, and I have cool. the flexibility to be able to do that. So, um, you know, so you actually do have freedom. Yes, I do. I definitely have personal freedom for sure. Which aspects of your business are distasteful or unpleasant for you? Um, I can't, you know, Sometimes you just, it's hard to, you want it sometimes more than the people that you're trying to help want it or yes. they think that they, they say they want it, but they're not doing what needs to be done in order to get what they want. And you see that it's really not as hard as they're making it seem. And it's just kind of, that's mm -hmm. kind of frustrating. Um, and that can be both from the business side, you know, coaches that I'm trying to help right. make a little bit of income and from the fitness side, people are trying to get into shape. So that can be, um, 
a little frustrating. And then sometimes, you know, this, this is rare, but there are a couple of um, people that I know that are, um, you know, I question sometimes what, they, what they're doing, what they're, you know, if they're really helping us or hurting us from the MLM mm -hmm. standpoint. So, mm -hmm. um, but those are just things, it's just like with any job, you're not going to like everything you do, every part right. of your job, so no matter how much you love your job. So just kind of suck it up and deal with it. <laughs> right, right. And minimize the amount of time you have to deal with it. Exactly. For you, um, I know that you are, because we've talked about this personally, like we both have very specific goals about income and also lifestyle and what we will and won't do. Um, what is your personal definition of being a successful entrepreneur? Um, loving what you do mm -hmm. and still finding a way to earn whatever income you, you hope to earn while having that freedom to make your own schedule and to, um, you know, be home with your family. That's, yes. that's so for you, that's, so it's, it's loving, it, keep loving it, have the freedom and then integrate your family. Right. And I think what happens, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, and sometimes you might need to, um, you know, my financial goals have gone up and down, you know, mm -hmm. when I first started, I thought I would be at a high, I'm going to be honest with you, I thought I would be at a much higher place. Mm -hmm. but then I started thinking, but look where I am. You know, I, I'm, I, I think you always want to set these really high goals, which are great, but you don't want to get upset if you don't hit them because you're right. still, and sometimes I'm, I'm a type of person that gets upset if I don't hit them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but I'm here, you know, and yeah. that's okay. You know, that's okay. And, and on the way to getting those goals, sometimes to get them, you need to give up some family time or give up yeah. some freedom. And that for you is not, that's a non-negotiable for you right now. Right. You, and that is when I went to um, 2018 thinking that I really didn't want to go backwards in my business, but my goal was to actually, I was work, I worked very hard the year before and um, I didn't really go anywhere. My goal was to not work as hard and still stay where I was. And, and that, did I, that happen so far? Has it happened? I, yeah. Well, I'm not working as hard, but I'm actually higher than I was. This is fascinating to me because I think this is true because in my old business, I would grind it out from five o'clock in the morning till seven 30 at night and then feel bad because there was still more to do. And now I actually work just smarter and not as hard. Mm -hmm. And because I, and I, it's just this really hard thing to get people to believe that the grinding isn't actually what, what brings the money. Absolutely. It's being intentional. So yes. whereas before I, when I would have a challenger or somebody that wasn't doing what they were supposed to do with their meals, or if I had a coach that I knew wanted to work the business, but just wasn't, I would pour my heart and soul into these individuals and it would, they would take significant amount of time. And you know what? D it didn't work, you yes. know? So what I have done is I have given them just specific things I need them to do. Can you do this this week? Can you do this this week? And if they do it, then I give them something else and something else. Mm. But what happens is, and this, you know, this is, this is the reality. You, you, most people are not going to work as hard as you want them to work. Mm -hmm. um, and if they stop doing these little teeny small things, I'm always there for them, mm -hmm. but I'm not constant. I'm not taking any time. They're not taking my time anymore. That's um, so great. So, and you know, it's, it isn't for anyone. I mean, eating clean and working out, that's not for everybody. You know, right. the, building a MLM business isn't for, isn't for everyone. You might think it's for you, but that's it, not for everyone. And that's okay. So yes. I've always been, um, you know, I've kept it very positive, but as a result, I've, my frustration level has like totally mm -hmm. gone down. And so it's ironically the detaching that gets you more success. Yeah. You know, kind of fascinating. Sometimes when people say, you know, it may or may not be for you. Some people are like, well, it is for me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you just kind of like not take the pressure off everybody. Yes. Um, the people that really will respond will res do respond. And the people that don't wouldn't anyways, even if you took 20 hours trying to help them. So. Right. So you've learned how to still be there for them and do a really good job and over deliver without like completely de demolishing your own energy. Exactly. I love it. What is there something you wish you'd known before becoming an MLM entrepreneur? Um, I think that I, I wish this, I mean, this has been around for a long time. Each body's mm -hmm. been around for a long time and I never even heard of it until I, um, you know, mm -hmm. Shanti and Sanity and Tony Horton's P90X. I think I would could have taken this and run with it like 10 years ago. Mm. Uh, so I do wish in a way 
that I had been more um, social media aware, mm. um, maybe. But you know, things happen for a reason. So mm -hmm. um, I mean, I I really feel I could have even uh, built a. I feel I could have really built even a stronger business if I had done it started a few years back earlier. I think most MLM people would probably say that too. It's yeah. just, just the way it is, you know? Yeah. Is there anything you wish you'd done differently in the business side of it? From when I signed on? Yeah. Um, you know, I think, I mean, I mean, I definitely made a lot of mistakes, but it, it was all like learning mistakes. So yes, yes I definitely, um, when I look back, there are definitely things I would never would have done now. Um, in terms Can of you give me an example? Well, like, like I was saying, my social media posts, yep. Um, yep. I was really gung ho when I started. So I actually had a party, a fitness party where people came to my house and I showed them all these workout programs. It was like, it, it was totally, um, I mean, it was fun, but it was very, it was like salesy, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it's just, and I did, I got a lot of sales out of it, but not, that's not what I, that's not what I was wanting to do, but I just didn't mm -hmm. really know what to do. It took me a right. while to figure out how to do all this. Um, so. I definitely made a lot of mistakes, but that's the thing. You know, when I try to tell my coaches, if you're not sure whether you should do something, do it, do it anyway. You know, you'll know. And if you, if it yes. doesn't, if it ends up falling on its face, well, you tried, you know, and then right. just don't do it again or learn from it. So um, the worst thing you can do is not do anything. So when I think about all those things that I did that I wouldn't have done if I had known, it still was a learning. I love that answer. That's fantastic. Um, is there a strategy that you can share with the people who I work with, the entrepreneurs and solopreneurs who are trying to integrate family and other obligations and their work and time for themselves? Like, do you have any strategies that you use for integrating all of these things? Um, my big thing is that I, I try to get, you know, and I'm, I'm not as organized as I want to be. Um, but my big thing is to be organized for the week. So I have my block of time. I really try um, to shut my computer down in the in the afternoon when the kids come home from school and then I will still work my business but it's more of um like when I'm waiting for them to get, get done with dance or something like that it'll be more of a mobile like not yes not time my focus time is going to be during the day when they're at school gotcha. and, and I try not to to have any kind of focus time in the evening or the weekend doesn't always work that way but for the most part that's how it that's how it is and then i always my big my biggest thing is on sunday night having my schedule for the week and it's nothing fancy i take a pencil and my little passion planner and i write down what i need to accomplish and i do it in pencil so i can erase it oh i love that um, and when it's done and then rewrite something else and i'm totally fine with the fact nothing that whole week, it never always gets accomplished, but a lot of those things do. What doesn't get accomplished goes to the following week. So awesome. um, that alone has helped me. When I first started, I was very, very disorganized. And I was constantly on my phone. And con yes. you know, it drove Ben crazy. Um, and I told him it was just because I was just starting, just starting, just starting. I wasn't really sure what to do. And it was that was kind of true. Um, but once I was able to get myself on a schedule, and I don't want to see my, you know, trying to get your kids off social media. So I don't yeah. want them to see me on my phone. I totally agree. You know, I totally um, agree. Yes. It's like, you don't want to be a hypocrite and you're on your phone saying, Oh, but this is just for work right. because then you're always working. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a balancing act and it, you have to be really intentional about it. Right. I agree. It's like you have to have rules for yourself, just like you would have rules for your kid. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So like, for example, I used, I turned off the no Facebook messenger. I turned off notifications. Mm -hmm. uh, so the only thing I'm getting notified on my phone is like a text message mm -hmm. or my email, which I, I only turned on really because I was getting emails for my kids, not for mm -hmm. me. Um, but so I, so I turn that off. So I don't see, and I don't log on to my messages more than like once a day. Also, also checking into your groups. It's the other thing I was checking into my groups with every notification I got. Oh, wow. I don't do that anymore. I mean, if I'm on the computer, I will frequently check in when I see somebody's posted in the group, but then when I'm off the computer, I don't worry about it. I might Good not check you. in. 14 hours. It's okay. That takes a lot of, um, I, I want to say willpower, but it's not exactly what I mean because it's, it's like the, the ding hits you and then that's the dopamine hit and you're like, Oh, well something new is going on and it takes you right into that virtual world. So it takes a lot of willpower to set that up. 
-hmm. But once you're out of the habit of just constantly checking your phone and checking your groups and checking your messages, it's very freeing because then you just batch. I answer these emails here and I check my group here. Like it's like what you talked about, you carve out time to do the specific thing and then you're just much more efficient. Exactly. And the other thing is too, if you are an MLM and you want to try to, um, you know, convince some of your very best, you know, my challengers or your customers to actually join you um, in a journey and they see that you're constantly online and constantly responding to every single comment, they're going to be like, I don't have time for this. That's you know, a so, really good point. Um, I want people to see that, you know, I am, you can, even if you work full time, you can still carve out, you know, an hour or so. If you really love what you do, I mean, yes. if you love the business that you're in, you can carve out a couple hours a day or an hour a day to, to build it. Right. I love that. Um, what advice would you give to a new entrepreneur? Um, to stay consistent mm -hmm. no matter what. Okay. Um, if you think about if you had a brick and mortar business and you opened your business and then business was kind of up and down, up and down, would you just like stop showing up? You know, wouldn't you make a commitment to my, my feeling was always, I'm going to commit to this for five years, um, before I decide what I want to do. And, um, I'm not even at the five, five year mark yet. So you have to, it, it, you have to think of it like a brick and mortar business. You're not going to shut down shop because business is slow. Mm -hmm. So stay consistent no matter what, um, with whatever that is you're posting or you're inviting yes. or how, whatever it is. And, um, even when the times are even when nobody's responding to you, you still have to have yourself out there because people are always watching. Um, yeah, lots of times people, they, they are successful at first because, you know, they're excited. Yeah. And also they have like, their warm market, you know, their mom buys something from them, their brother buys something from them, <laughs> you know, and then that dries up and then people aren't calling or, or aren't responding. And then, so then what ends up happening is they stop doing it as much which makes it even worse. Yes. And then they say, oh, this is not for me. I'm not good at it. But yes, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Those are good pieces of advice. Well, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to share these insights because so many women, I, I believe that if women were making more money, the world would be a better place. If women had more power and more voice, the world would be a better place. So the more women who bring money into the economy, the better it is for them and their families and their societies and their communities. So um, it's so important to see other women doing the work that you're doing. So I really appreciate it, Carolyn. I, well, I know this was you. time out of your day and it's, I'm very grateful to that. Um, thank you. Thanks, Jen. And thanks for all Super the help. Helpful. Me too. Oh, my pleasure. You know, I love that. <laughs> I will. Uh, I'm always happy to chat with you. We always have such great conversations. We do. Um, I'll see you soon. And thank okay. you again. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.